I'm gonna be sharing all the dinners I made this past week, plus my meal plan and grocery bill. I believe that meal planning is a homemaking must. Hi everyone, Jennifer here, and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the meals that I cooked this last week for my family. I'm also going to share my meal plan with you. So let's just jump right into it. As if my writing wasn't illegible enough, this is what my son did to my meal plan. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just gonna be reading it for you anyway. This week was rather interesting. I tried two new recipes this week. I'm making black beans and rice in the Instant Pot. This is a recipe from my friend Amy who raved about it. It's where you don't have to cook the rice and you don't have to soak the beans. So you're gonna to wanna to see that. I also made homemade hamburger helper for the children, but we ate it too and it was really good. Um, I'm making a vintage recipe, an ambrosia salad. This is from my grandmother. She made it all the time and I was really feeling like having it here at the end of the summer. So I made ambrosia salad with a lemon pepper chicken. And then um, we also had potato skins and more salad this week. I also make a pizza. If I use a recipe from someone else or from a cookbook, I will link that down below. What usually happens is I tend to modify things a lot for my family. So I can leave the recipe that I use down below as well as my own modifications uh, to kind of make the recipe my own. Okay, as for the grocery list, what we ended up spending was roughly about $145 for the entire week. Now that wasn't even for all of these meals, that was for a lot of extra stuff. Here's the way that I shop. If I'm going to buy Buy, um, let's say frozen vegetables. I won't just buy one packet of frozen vegetables, I'll buy five or six just to stock up the freezer. I'll also do that with things like cheese. Let's say I need a certain type of cheese for a recipe. Well, I'll also buy a bunch of other cheeses. That's just how I am. I just have always been like that with food. I like to prepare and have a lot of food on hand just in case, plus a lot of things that can keep a long time. I order grocery delivery most of the time, so it just works better for me to do that. Um, and then I don't have to order it so much. So I did spend about $145 this week for a family of six in California. That's pretty good. So that was what the grocery bill was. I ordered it on Instacart. And now let's get into the meals. Okay, let's get started with the black beans and rice in the Instant Pot. So my friend Amy gave me this recipe and she loved it, so I had to try it. But basically you're going to be layering some onions, and some brown rice, I will have all of the ingredients down below, as well as some black beans into your Instant Pot. Now, you do not have to soak the black beans. All you have to do is rinse them. That is what is so appealing about this recipe. You're going to top it all off with one quart of chicken stock. And then I'm going to put in some spices, like ground cumin, and then I also believe I'm putting in some garlic powder here. Yep, about a tablespoon of garlic powder. Then you're gonna put in some salt and pepper and now add the diced tomatoes. It's very important that you follow the exact measurements and that you also put everything in in this order and that you don't mix it. So I'm pretty much layering it all on top together and I'm gonna show you what it looks like in just a moment. So this is what it looks like. It looks like a soupy mess, but I just put everything in, um, in the order that it needed to go in and I'm just going to put on the lid of my Instant Pot and set it to sealing. And then you can just put it on high pressure for 22 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to be making some guacamole. So I have an avocado here, some cilantro, salt and pepper, and thank you to the 500 people who told me I was using my lemon squeezer wrong in my last video. Thank you so much for your concern. <laughs> Um, that was the first time I ever used it was on camera, so I have since figured it out. But it is a bit confusing, okay? It's not the most obvious thing. Anyway, here I am using my lemon squeezer, and I'm just going to make a fresh little guacamole to go on the side of this. And I'm just going to mash it all up. Okay, I am going to vent, and that took about two minutes, and now I'm going to take the lid off, and this is what it looks like. 
If you take the lid off and it's not quite ready yet, let's say the rice isn't fully cooked or the beans still seem hard, you can put it back on for about 10 minutes, maybe add a little bit more liquid. Now I'm just going to put lots of chopped cilantro in there. I love cilantro, it's one of my favorite herbs. Unfortunately, I never have success growing it. And this is what it looks like. I just topped mine with a little bit of Mexican shredded cheese and had that yummy guacamole on the side. I have to say this was so delicious. It was very filling and it made a lot. I ended up freezing half of it. The rest of it fed the family and even the kids like this one. This one was a big hit. So thank you, Amy. Okay, let's move on to the vintage ambrosia salad. This is my grandmother's recipe and she used to make this for us all the time as kids and I loved it. So you're just gonna get some pineapple tidbits, some mandarin oranges, maraschino cherries, and some grapes. And if you have really little ones eating this, you can cut the grapes um, in slices. I'm gonna take about a cup of shredded coconut, a cup of mini marshmallows, and just mix that all together and I'm going to be using sour cream. I know that some recipes call for Cool Whip or whipped cream, but actually, just trust me on this one, sour cream works really well here because the fruit itself is very sweet. So this is a vintage recipe, really popular in the 50s. My grandmother used to make this all the time, so this is a very nostalgic recipe for me, and um, she would serve this on top of lettuce with a sandwich or something like that. So what we did was we grilled some chicken with some olive oil and lemon pepper. That is such a good seasoning for chicken. If you've never tried it before, I highly recommend it. And this was how our plate looked. And it was so delicious. I love the sweetness of that salad. I love this meal and it was just really light and wonderful. Okay, next we are making a homemade hamburger helper. So this is a family favorite meal. The kids really love this meal and we actually liked it too. So I'm just putting some onions into my cast iron skillet and this is what I'm going to be mixing into the meal. So as the onions saute on the cast iron skillet, I'm adding my ground beef and I'm just using this little tool here. I have seen people use this before on YouTube and I don't know what took me so long but I finally got one for myself and it makes the mince so much better. And now I'm just putting a combination of paprika and garlic powder. I will leave this recipe link down below. I'm also using um, an Italian grinder here but you could use any herbs that you like. Now I'm going to put in some milk. And I have some beef broth there and I'm also going to put in some tomato sauce. Then I'm going to put in my macaroni noodles. These are not cooked. So they're actually going to cook inside the sauce. And I'm just going to stir that all up and I put the lid on it. And when it's finished cooking, and again, I will leave all of the directions linked in my corresponding blog post, I'm going to put some cheese on top and just allow that to melt. That's freshly grated cheddar cheese. And you could put some salt and pepper on this and it's really good. I just served this with a simple salad of lettuce and croutons and ranch dressing, which the ranch dressing didn't really come out that well. I should make my own ranch dressing. But anyway, this isn't the prettiest thing to look at, but it's really filling and the kids really like this meal. They devoured this meal. Um, so it's just a nice way to make your own hamburger helper from home. And I just had a little leftover of the ambrosia salad from the day before. Okay, I'm just showing you a meal that wasn't really on the meal plan here, but we do make a pizza about once a week. It feeds the whole family and we do like strange toppings on our pizza. This one has onions, olives, and sliced mango and red peppers along with cheese and pizza sauce. 
Today's dinner is baked potato skins with a side salad. So I just uh, cooked some bacon in the oven and I'm just giving it a quick chop right here. And I'm going to shred um, this block of cheddar cheese. Not the whole block, probably about one to two cups. I picked these um, green onions from the garden and I'm just giving them a good chop. I also picked some chives as well. I baked my potatoes earlier in the morning. So I did this in the morning because I always forget when it's dinner time. So I baked them earlier and that's a really good tip. So I just put them in the oven um, for about one hour at 400 degrees and I rubbed them in olive oil and I seasoned the outside of them with seasonal. And my daughter's helping me here uh, scoop out the center of the potato skins and we don't get rid of that. I saved that and I sauteed it with butter and put some more seasonal on it. That's the seasoning I'm talking about. I got that on Amazon and it's so good. I'll link it down below. So now we're gonna put our potato skins back on this cookie sheet covered with foil. And we're just gonna bake those a little bit longer in the oven. And in the meantime, I'm going to make a salad. I always use my salad spinner and this just gets out all of the water. And especially if I'm using lettuce for my own garden, there's always bugs in it. So I always use the salad spinner just to get all those little guys out. And that shows you how much water was taken out of it. So into our salad today, I'm just putting some red pepper and just ignore my knife skills. I need to sharpen my knife. I'm going to put in one avocado. And I like to score the avocado inside the peel and then you can easily scoop it out with a spoon. These are our beefsteak tomatoes from the garden. They are just so amazing and we're getting so many of them this year. So I'm just going to chop up one of these and put this inside the salad. The potato skins are ready. So I'm just going to fill them all with some of the chopped bacon and the freshly grated cheddar cheese. And I'm going to put these back in the oven just for a few minutes so that the cheese melts. And then I top each one with a little bit of sour cream and some of those chopped green onions and chopped chives. And I serve it with our side salad. I put Caesar dressing on the salad. And let me tell you, this was so delicious. Everybody ate everything. We all love this dish. It's so, so good. Okay, my daughter wanted to make a dessert this week, so she made these strawberry meringues. And this is from a cookbook, I'll leave it down below. All my kids really love to cook. So today we're making strawberry meringues and this is what the recipe calls for. So she's just going to be putting some egg whites into our KitchenAid and beating them up until they're frothy. And then we're just adding some sugar. And once that's all mixed together, we are going to put them on a little cookie sheet to bake. The 
this is what they turned out like. We stuffed them with whipped cream and strawberries and they were so delicious. We made them a bit too big so we had to break them up in order for everybody to get some but they were so good. I really recommend this dessert. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope that my homemaking series gives you a lot of inspiration and motivation in your own home. Please leave a comment down below and share your favorite recipe that you've been making for your family lately. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in my next video. Bye.